All right, this video is gonna show how to get um, objects into Octane X for iPad Pro. So I've got the uh, app open here and you'll see it comes with a bunch of uh, demos and the one on the lower left here is the one I did the other day. This one I actually did in standalone mode on the PC. And uh, I was able to send this file over and it, it worked really nice. And this is like the iPad, uh, iPad uh, interface. But I'm gonna show how to set up a scene from scratch. I'm gonna use my Sketchbot eyeball that I've been working on for the last couple of days. If you guys have been following me on my socials, you'll see that I had uh, been saving it out from Maya. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and exit to, we'll go standalone mode. You have to get to do this front, currently right now in order to access this file new menu. They're gonna change some of this stuff in the next update. So right now you've got this blank scene and you can you can resize, I think here. Yeah, you can resize stuff a little bit. It's really hard to, to pick these dividers. They should uh, have a little bit more uh, delineation about where you're supposed to pick. Um, so in order to get something in here, you need to right click on the no graph editor. Well, there's no way to right click with Apple Pencil. You have to use your finger. This is something I had to find out about online. If you hold your finger for about two seconds, it'll pop up a menu. Uh, this is like equivalent to a right click. And then you can um, find the import down at the bottom here. So you import, and I'm going to import the uh, character that I've been working on. I've saved it out as a FBX file from Maya, because I wanted to retopologize it for after uh, after doing a basic sketch in, um, in Nomad Sculpt, I wanted to clean it up. So right now you don't see anything because it's like kind of off to the upper left, which is kind of weird. I wish Octane, if you're listening, if you could like show the node right where you clicked on your finger, that'd be kind of helpful. But right now you have to kind of go over here and like reframe your scene to see it. So right now we've got the character in here, but we don't see anything yet because it's not hooked up to a, a camera or a render target. So you have to, again, once again, click and hold. Uh, get the very bottom here, render target, accept that. And now if you take the eyeball mech and connect it to the geometry and then click on render target, should see something, there we go. There's our character. And I'm gonna pinch to zoom. Another thing here, oh toy, is that this pinch to zoom is very wonky. Like I'm actually clicking and with two fingers to, to do the gestures, but it's it's snapping. Every time I, I release, it snaps and it does this really real, real rotation and it goes out of focus. So I'm hoping this will be fixed in the next, in the next iteration. You have to be a little bit more iPad friendly here. I know that this is a port from the desktop version but it's a little wonky with the gestures at the moment. Um, ugh, it's really frustrating. I'm trying to move it into, into center it up here. One interesting thing to note here is that you'll see that the character came in with two keyframes because I actually had a zeroed out pose, which is I was doing a rudimentary rig. And, I, and you can see here on this little slider, I can slide it over to, to one. And there we go, there's there, back and forth. So you can see that you can actually check out your, you can scroll up through your animation here. So right now I've got the character in here and that's it. Um, let's go have some lighting. Uh, again, click hold to enact the right click and then we'll go up to environments and we'll just use the default daylight environment. And you can sort of pinch, pinch and drag again, but again, this is all, this is kind of wonky when you two fingers to pinch to hold and pan or zoom, but it's really, it's really wonky. Um, I just have been clicking on this button to frame all. Um, and you can move these around. We're gonna just take the output of here and just click it in. We wanna do it into environment. Don't do it into a visible environment, do it into environment. And then you'll see it pops in. And you can go through and you can change all these settings. But one cool thing to do is here is instead of having to type in values, you can just kind of click on this little uh, map and kind of like use this as a picking your location, just to kind of quickly kind of go through and move it around and get, and get some lighting in here. So this is all cool and I'm gonna put a plane in here too so I can have the character so I can see some shadows. So right now, I'm gonna add another piece of geometry. So I'm gonna use a node. Again, right click, press and hold. And we're gonna to go up to geometry, add a geometric primitive. And again, it's up here in the upper, you can kind of see that, you can see it hiding over here. I'm gonna just tap on that button to frame everything. And here's an interesting thing. If I was to actually take this now and like, how am I supposed to connect this? Do I just connect it to the render target? Nope, because what it does is that just it turn off the eyeball mech. And also, why is it black? Well, it happens to be set to a box. So we're, set, we're inside a box right now. So what we want to do is, I can go back and change this back this way, and it pops back to that. 
we need to create a geometric node, a group node, sorry. So we're gonna right click geometry group. And this is gonna allow us to connect multiple pieces of whatever objects you have. So we'll take the character and we'll take this primitive and then we'll take this over to the geometry. And now it's working, but we're not, again, we have to change the primitive. So right now the primitive is set to a box. We'll go up here and change it to a plane. And now we've got the plane with the, we can see the shadows being cast. I can go back over here to the daylight and that works. And if I go to the geometric primitive, right now uh, it's got a default material here. So I can go in here and change, change this. You can see that we can actually change that ground plane. We're gonna keep it kind of a neutral gray for now. All right, so now let's start talking about how we get our materials assigned here. So what we'll do is, when I set this up in Maya, I had already played around with getting this to work in Octane on Maya. So when I exported the OBJ, I'm sorry, the FBX file, I already had these uh, materials assigned. You could assign them in here, but these are already pre-assigned, so it helps me out because I just I, I know what's what. So like material one was my overall armor color, so and it's a universal material, so I'll just keep it set to that, and we'll go ahead and choose my trademarked, uh, not really, but sketch about orange. And we'll keep the roughness there, like the, I have to highlight as it is. And let's see here, continue on. Uh, you can actually go down here, to, if you click on, I think it was this, this uh, little round icon. Again, I can't read what these are. You have to, get, you have to refer to the uh, docs because there, there's no, it's not really telling you what it's doing, but you can click on an object and it should pop up. You can see it's, it looks like this is like maybe picking by material or picking by object, I can't imagine which one it is. But if we click on that, this is the eye white, we'll make it pure white. And then I know that this one was the iris. So I had a nice blue iris there. And then we've got the, uh, the pupil, which I want this to be, I want it to be kind of a flat. So we'll go ahead and change this to a, a diffuse material. So I don't get any specular component in there. And then the last one is the uh, material, the um, metal material. And we'll go ahead and just dial in metallic. You can see it's pretty shiny. Ugh, this pinch of zoom is driving me nuts. Let's uh, go to this little AFI button here. That's autofocus. I can click on that. You can see how it's... Let's go ahead. This this uh, depth of field is really wonky, so let's go into the camera and take the uh, aperture up a little bit or down so it's not too... I like a little bit of depth of field, but right now that was, I don't use it too much. All right, now I can, I can click and it'll stay in focus. So let's go back to this material and we will take the roughness up a little bit so it's more of a brush metal. It's pretty cool. And let's zoom out. And if I click on the AFI button again, I'm focused. Now let's add one more object here. Let's add another piece of geometry because I want to show you guys another thing. So if, say again, we right click, add geometry node, primitive and so now I've, I've got two inputs but how do I add more to this I can't override this so what I'll do is if you click on the geometry group you go up to the top you can see it says add input now watch what happens when I click on add input you're actually adding another node down here uh, an input so you can add as many as you need to so we'll go ahead and now just add this one into it and again because this is box that's sitting in the center we'll change this to um, let's change it to like a um, into a sphere and there is a way to set up a placement node to um, to change a scale and I think it does it 
by default when I went over into the iPad mode, but let, I'll show you how to do it here. So I, if I remember correctly, click, right click again. And we, uh, this time I have to find it because I can't remember where it's at. So I find type, we'll type in placement. And this again, if you like watch some videos online, you'll, you'll learn about the, how do you stand alone. So add a placement node. And we'll take this placement node. We'll pipe this in. And now I should be able to go in here and, and, and like, for instance, scale this down. So it looks like something here. There it is. We're scaling this down. And we can move it over. Move it up. We can scale it. Oh, this, it's very touchy, these controls. All right. And then for this uh, primitive that we've added, it has a default, it has a uh, material set already. So we go here and, oh, that was a, that was a floor. I'm sure there's a way to, to, to name these. Let's go ahead and we'll just pick that like that and we'll go and pick this one. I'm sorry, grab the wrong run. This one. And we'll make that like a, a red sphere. And let's make that universal. So I get some highlights in there. Can we get a metallic sphere or not? All right, so this is cool. Let's go over to see what happens when you go into the iPad mode. So First thing I want to do is I want to go File, Save As, and then we'll call this um, Eyeball Mech Tutorial. Yeah, I'm going to replace it because I had done another one where I didn't have the audio on. All right, so now if you go up to File, Exit Standalone Mode, now we're into the cool iPad mode. So it's a little bit stripped down seems that this is a little bit cleaner. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, skip around that much when I'm moving with the, the, the two finger pinch and zoom, which is, which is, works nice. Um, so now you have to, you can go in here and click and you can, you can see, you can like change your camera settings here. Um, you can, here's where you can like screw around through depth of field. If you dial it in and then you go over to the left here, the very bottom icon is focus. If you hold down and press and hold, it says pick camera focus. So I can pick an object. So if I come up here and zoom in, you'll see it all really accentuate. So if I want to click on like the, the arm and then we'll go right back to the camera and we'll pop that F stop down. So now I can actually click on the ball and you can see how it goes into focus, and I can click on the character and back and forth. Let's take that. Let's not take it so drastic. Um, if I make this larger on the screen, you can hit the on the middle of there on the top of the icons, and we can repick our focus. There's also a way if you lock your camera, you are not accidentally moving around. You can do other settings. So. Uh, you can change your exposure. You can have some vignetting to this, some some, some uh, post effects here, saturation. Pump it a little bit higher. Um, enable some post processing. Uh, you can do like bloom. Change your cutoff on the bloom and also the glare power, which introduces like this glare. I know in desktop mode, I think there's a way to dial in these, uh, these flares. So let's turn it off. And then this is pretty cool. It can, it can go back to your daylight environment and move, it, move your lighting around here in this interface. It's pretty cool. Uh, film settings. These are render modes, I believe. Come on, why is that? Maybe because this is locked. Let's see. There we go. Normal render, clay mode, which just strips it out of all the color and uh, clay, uh, just clay color mode. Go back to normal. Oh, one other thing I want to notice uh, to mention was that you'll notice that hey, right now the render looks pretty good and it's um, in what's called uh, direct lighting mode, but we're not getting any bounce from the floor. So if we go into the kernel, we'll change it from direct lighting to path tracing and watch what happens. Get more uh, actual 
a realistic bounce now because um, it's actually doing the tracing. And if you go to PMC, PMC kernel, I think this is the highest one, which is like the most uh, accurate one. You can change your samples and, and the depth in here. But I like, I, I've been playing around just with the path tracing for now. And what else do I want to show? There's a couple things here. You can actually pick your object. Pick a material or pick an object. So when you pick the object, sorry, we want to activate it. And then if you click on one of these icons for translation, rotation, or scale, if I pick and then click on it, I believe that, I hope that I grabbed the ball. I don't know if I grabbed it. I might have grabbed the plane. This is also a little bit wonky. I'm, I'm, I'm discovering that it's not actually picking objects that I'm, I'm clicking on, which is odd. Should be picking that, that should be picking my ball. I, something I, I picked here, I don't know. Okay, it looks like, it looks like I picked the plane. <laughs> also notice, I, right now there's no way to undo this. I can't like double tap to, uh, like in Procreate to, to undo. So be a little aware about that. I'm sure that's something that I'm gonna have to add into this as well. But I don't know why I cannot pick this ball it's like it like I'm clicking on it, but it's not it's not picking it. So Otai, if you're watching again, that's another bug. Anyhow, I just want to show this kind of quick quickly to show how easy it is to get your objects in here. Let's uh, oh one other cool thing is if you go into the upper left menu here and you click on um, advanced mode. So while you're in the iPad uh, interface, you can click on these and now you get the scene inspectors and then all the nodes that you expected in the stand standalone version, which is kind of cool. So you have a little bit more control and you have to dive into all the stuff at some point, but that's pretty cool. And then you can turn that off. And what is LDR mode? I don't know what that does. HDR mode. I'm not seeing a difference between these two. I don't. I, we need some documentation to tell us what all the stuff is doing. So I did save this. I'll save the project. I'll just save it one more time. And if I go now to exit to gallery, I think it'll show up in the gallery. Hmm. It's not there. Let's see if I lost. Let me see if I can load it up. iPad. Go back to my Octane and. Looks like it's there. And I have to click it again. Okay, that's a little wonky, but it's there. And it looks like we can go back. I don't know how I got it to work as far as rendering a, a thumbnail on that previous one. If I exit to standalone, we'll say yes. There it goes. All right, cool. So that worked. So, yeah, so. Um, Check it out. Definitely uh, go online and uh, a couple of if you're if you're using the desktop version, I was watching some of the cool uh, Octane Universe demos from Elric Keller. If you want to check out the more about the standalone, read the docs and also I think it was Andrew Pierce or Alex Pierce on YouTube. I found he has a couple of really good like getting started um, in um, standalone mode. So I, I recommend checking those out. But yeah, jump in and have fun.